Walker. Thanks for joining us. Your morning forecast is just ahead, but first we want to talk about Tropical Storm Gordon. We start with the latest information connected with the storm. Here it is. Gordon has now been downgraded to a tropical storm, and all hurricane warnings and watches have been dropped. A tornado watch remains in effect until 8 p.m. for most of the Florida Peninsula. It may be extended later on this evening. Tropical storm watches have been extended northward to the North Carolina-Virginia border. At this hour, we have two crews standing by in Florida. Let's start in Clearwater. That's where meteorologist Jeff Morrow is standing by. Jeff, give us the latest from your area. All right, Nick. Well, it's, uh, it's been quite a day. started off a little windy, a little rainy, got a little bit worse and worse to about noon today. We ended up picking up probably about two inches, two and a half inches of rain, a bit more as we headed towards Sarasota. And then it cleared up, dry air wrapped around the storm system and uh, really kind of cleared the sky. And we're in and out as, the sun, as far as the sunshine. But even though the rain has gone away, that doesn't mean the flooding problems have gone away. We've had some reports of some generally minor coastal flooding, some roads and even a few bridges have been closed because some of the bays and uh, inlets have been uh, overwashing some of those roadways. So some of them are closed. So you want to be careful if you're thinking about going out anywhere tonight. And there's been concern, really, about Gordon throughout this last 24 to 48 hours. Winds gusting up to 55 miles per hour and driving rain is what Hurricane Gordon brought to the Sun Coast. Our biggest concern is, is obviously flooding. We, we have some very, very flood-prone areas out on the beach that, that we need to make sure we take care of. Um, there are some other areas inland in the city that, that have typically flood even in a summer thunderstorm, so we have to be careful of those as well. Fortunately, the two inches of rain that have fallen so far have only caused minor street flooding. The area is eroding away rapidly. There's about two feet of standing water, and cars are uh, almost to the point where they're going to stall out going through this puddle. We're going to need to get a crew out here. Officials are keeping a close eye on surge, too. Seas right now outside probably uh, maybe uh, maybe three feet or so in some in some areas. We have a, a, a pretty chop, pretty bad chop inside the uh, ICW. Tampa Bay is about three feet above normal. While officials watch the rising water, others are taking advantage of the high surf. You, the yes, sir. Body, sir. You, can, you can go out there now. Yeah, I'd be real careful, though. You've got some strong sweeps. And we are back live now. We're taking a look out down the beach. And again, there are some folks uh, who are actually out in the water, believe it or not. There is a rip-roaring sideshore current. Uh, as Dr. Lyons has been describing, again, the water just flying up the beach from south to north. So it's really quite dangerous to be out in the water, and obviously we don't recommend that. In fact, we're discouraging people from getting in the water. Still very windy and uh, <laughs> getting very sand blasted here out on the beach. Nick, let's get back to you. All right, Jeff. Thanks. It looks like you'll have to hold onto that hat a little longer. We want to head farther south now to Mike Seidel. Mike is standing by in Ocala, Florida, and Mike, you have been getting more rain than wind, right? That's right. And actually, Nick, we're in Ocala, which is north of where Jeff is. We're in the uh, north central part of Florida, right off I-75. And we've had a lot of heavy rain this afternoon. That's backed off. And we've seen some blue sky and these clouds racing by as that dry air wraps around. And really, the dry air was the eventual, eventual killer to this storm. And that's why it weakened to uh, just a tropical storm and never intensified beyond a Category 1. Enough wind to blow down some palm, uh, palm limbs and uh, some some debris around this afternoon and we've noticed the flag being whipped by these winds and in the distance you can see a couple of banners that got kind of untied by the wind but you know we're talking peak gusts 25 to 30 miles an hour and uh, that is not doing much in the way of damage so a little bit of a cleanup and tomorrow will be much nicer partly cloudy a leftover breeze and temperatures tomorrow back between 85 and 88 degrees so the worst of it overnight will be a little bit more rain that's it Nick all right, thank you, Mike Seidel. We want to turn now to our hurricane expert, John Hope, at the expert desk. And, John, of course, we've seen a lot of rain around the Florida Peninsula. It looked like, uh, will that continue to be the biggest threat from Gordon? Well, there's a lot of heavy rain, a lot more to come across the northern part of the state in particular. Maybe the biggest threat, though, in the next couple hours is the storm surge and that near where the center is coming ashore. We think the center is going to be ashore within the next couple of hours up uh, in the Cedar Key area. And right in that area and to the right uh, of where the center comes ashore, we think there's a good possibility of having up to seven feet or so of storm surge. We don't think there's going to be any considerable storm surge anywhere else down here farther south in Tampa Bay area. We don't think it's going to be any higher now than it has been. This is approaching, the center is approaching the coast at quite an acute angle here, so it's going to be a little while yet before it gets there, but really not very long. We can see it a little better on the combination radar 
and a satellite picture, I believe. Here you see the coastline like so, and down here you can see where the center of circulation is. So it's almost in the process of moving on already. And while we have this up, we remind you that we still have a tornado watch out for a good bit of the state of Florida up to late o'clock, and as Ben pointed out, that might be extended. We're not seeing anything out there right now that looks immediately threatening as far as tornado development is concerned. Now, the winds along the coast, the highest ones we still see are right here in the St. Petersburg area, uh, gusting to 38 miles an hour on the last observation, but mostly out of the south. Now, our forecast track that begins to accelerate it on up to the northeast, and by Wednesday afternoon, it's going to be way up there off the mid-Atlantic states. And what we're looking for, the path to go pretty close to the coast, and we're thinking uh, winds are going to be in the order of 40 or 50 miles an hour. We don't expect this to get back to a hurricane at all as it accelerates up to the northeast. That'll do it for this time. Nick? All right.